Alright? Um, but I'm Chef. 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 No, don't get me wrong. It's Chef. <laughs> um, uh, where were you at before this? Where was I at? Professionally? Professionally. Okay, professionally. I was the chef at Southside Country Club in here, here in town for about a year. And I lost my job. And it wasn't a good fit for me. It was not, I was not a good country club chef. Um, I like people too much. And you couldn't, I couldn't be myself there. They're all stuffy and uptight. And I lost my job. I was on, I was unemployed for about two months. I did a lot of other things. Uh, I don't sit around much. So I was doing a lot of other things, trying to take care of my family. And I got a phone call from the chef here and I've been here nine years, he called me up and said, hey, are you still looking for a job? And I said, heck yeah, and the end is, the rest is, the end is, as we say, the end is, uh, the, the rest is history. Um, got a phone call and uh, I truly believe that uh, God gave me this job, that I was, was not a good person when I was at the country club. I was ugly in my heart. And I went to church and I humbled myself, I cried, I asked for forgiveness, and I begged for mercy, and God said, I got a job for you. And he brought me here nine years ago, and the rest is history, and best job I've ever had in my life here at Milligan. And why, you would ask? It's because of young people like yourselves. I, but I also, the same token, I get to interact with President White, I get to interact with the board, I get to interact with some awesome students, as I said, uh, faculty. I've gotten to know a lot of people. I just talked to a lady, thir no, Wednesday, Wednesday, that graduated from Milliken in 1941. She's 100 years old. I got to interact with her. Unbelievable. This is a cool job, man. It's a very cool job. So, that help? It does. Okay. Um, so you said you've been a chef for so long. Like what got you into the profession of wanting okay. to be a chef? That's a great question too. Um, I'm going to take you back. This is now, man, am I really going to tell you how old I am? Yeah, 1980. I got my first job in 1980. I was a curb hop at, at Steak and Shake. And you guys are probably like, what the heck's a curb hop? Before they came up with this thing called drive through I was the drive through I would run up to your car, take the order, and bring out a tray and hang it on the on your window. That's what I did. I was 14 years old, and I did it in the summertime because I was I played football and things during the school year, and I worked weekends. But I started at Steak and Shake when I was 14. When I left six years later, I was running restaurants, and but I knew I needed to do more than work at Steak and Shake for the rest of my life, so I ended up going to culinary school. I went to Forest Park Community College in St. Louis and went through the Culinary Arts program. And then the rest is from history from there. And then it's just, I was, I'm all over the place. So besides here, besides being the chef here, I'm also a chef instructor at Ridgeland Community College. I've written one cookbook and I've given the cookbook to Milliken that they can use to generate uh, funds for, for scholarships for you kids. And then um, I also, own my own business where I do cooking shows at Mary Manor, which is just right up the street here, uh, who's the gentleman that owns it is also a Milliken grad. So, a uh, little bit of everything. So, yeah. Uh, so, even though you've been a chef for a long time, when did you get your culinary degree? Man, here we go. So my age out again. 1986. Was when I when I left college, college and I finished up, uh, but I've gone back to school a few times for there, not to get degrees, uh, but to do continuing education and take classes and do specific things of that sort. Um, one thing that I will always be jealous of you young people uh, is the importance of education. There is nothing more important than educating that. Your education is something I always, I will always be jealous of because I never, I never went that much farther. I have a very, my, one of my very best friends in the world. His name is Scott. He's a dentist. He's a doctor. And my other buddy is a financial analyst for Metropolitan Life and has a master's degree. And then there's me, McDonough, right? Um, 
But before you guys got here on May, in May, I had gastric bypass surgery on my belly. And as of today, I've lost 132 pounds. So I pushed myself. Now what I'm going to do, and I've made a commitment to Airmark and to Milliken, that I'm going to pursue getting my certification as a chef. My certification as a chef will also be an equivalent to a bachelor's degree uh, because I have to go through many classes. I have to go through, I have to go back to online school, take some classes, then I have to take two tests. Uh, one is a written test and one is a practical test uh, by other certified chefs to get my certification. But because of the importance I put on education, how am I to be an example to you all, even to my 14 year old, if I don't push myself for more? So I'm going back to school as well, because I want to do more than what I do already. So education is the most important thing you will ever come across in anything that you do. You know, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if I, I met you guys during your, uh, when you came for recruiting and things of that sort, but I always tell the parents, if you came down with your parents or you came with your parents and I got to interact with you on the visit day, I got a couple things that I say to almost all the parents, and everybody's like, oh, man, here. In the present, everybody knows. But I always say to you, I would say to you as the young person, as the student, you are not as smart as you think you are, and your parents are not as dumb as you think they are. But to listen to them, to understand. I had that realization when I was 25. I was living on my own in Miami, Florida, cooking in a restaurant. I was a chef, and I came back home, and I was... Hadn't seen my family. I'd missed Thanksgiving. I'd missed Christmas. I was on my own, and it was a hard time for me. But when I came home, I told my parents, I said, I'd like to apologize. And they're like, for what? I said, because I really thought that you both were really dumb. And then I lived on my own for the last, you know, six months or eight, or eight months and been run by myself, and I had to rely on just myself. And I realized that you guys really taught me great stuff, and I just wanted to say thanks, and you're not as dumb as I thought you were. And they're both like, oh, hey, hey. And it's like, you're really not as smart as you think you are, but to listen to older people because they have what they call life experience and age experience, and they can teach you things. And it's not almost always what you know, but who you know. So what I would say to you guys is branch out, introduce yourself to everybody you possibly can, learn to talk to people, interact with people, because the more people you know, the better off you're going to be in life. Why do I say that? Because I'm talking to you guys right now. I'm a better man because I get to talk to you guys. So. So you have some strong beliefs. And I know that things might have been different when you came here. And obviously when you came here, we didn't have the UC that we have now. Mm -hmm. So what, what beliefs did you bring that changed the kitchen for the better? Well, this is the belief I brought. And it's a simple one. And it's kind of funny. But I always say... To, to the students that you come here not for the furnace but for the computer but if the computer if the computer doesn't have support by the right stuff going into the furnace then I'm not doing my job am I going to meet your needs every day nope. not even going to try can't because you might not like something that you like and you like something that you don't like but you come from a different area than you do of the country and it's a different region where I come from another area and I'll give you a quick example Toasted cheese, or not toasted cheese, excuse me, toasted ravioli. You guys like toasted ravioli? Deep fried little raviolis, bread crumbs, right? When you get them, cheese filled or meat filled? Uh, it's normally meat filled. Only place you can get meat filled raviolis for the most part is in St. Louis. Because everywhere else in the country, they're cheese filled. But it's just, you, got, you come from the land of beautiful barbecue, bro. Ten, oh my God. And the land of Elvis. Where are you from, young man? Chicago. Chicago. Oh my God, dude! Some of the most beautiful deep dish pizza. I love. I love talking about food. I love all all of that kind of stuff. Philosophies that I brought: simple, customer service. You all are what we call a captive audience. That you depend on us for meals whenever you're here. And mediocre will not will not get it done. Again, will I meet your needs both every day? If you don't like meatloaf and I'm serving meatloaf, you're not going to be overly happy, right? right? And if you like meatloaf but you don't like catfish but you really love catfish, or if you, 
whatever it is. But what I try to do is put a melting pot of many different choices. And then there's going to be one of those days that we put out, I don't even know what, I don't even know what to say it is. But we put out something and you're like, both like, right on, chef. A couple of your fellow, um, I believe they're football players, actually asked me a couple weeks ago, chef, would you make some for us? Sure, if I can. Would you make us fried chicken? Done. Oh, yeah, I was a part of that group. Were you? <laughs> and we've had it twice since then, since you asked. So we've had it two times now. And every time I've done it, you kids have gone goo goo for it. That's beautiful, man. That's the kind of stuff that I can do. That's what I want to bring to Milliken. We did the horseshoe. We yeah. That was good too, wasn't it? We But we took it to another level. We're doing grilled cheeses this week. We're doing gourmet grilled cheeses, trying to throw some new things. Next week is Thanksgiving dinner. Oh man, ham, turkey, all the fix. Oh yeah, the president, Mrs. White will be down to do, to do uh, desserts with you, right? So what we try to do is try to do some fun things and do some, uh, keep it interesting for you because the biggest thing what I don't want for you, for you young people is meal fatigue. Man, it's a hamburger again. Oh man, no, but we can throw some other things at you and you can try some other stuff, but I will tell you, at the beginning of the school year, I did ribs. In one month's time, in four consecutive Wednesdays, I did ribs. And the Millican student body, in one month's time, knocked off 360 pounds of baby back ribs. You guys made me very proud. It's a lot of ribs, baby. But what we try to do is keep it fresh for you and try to keep it changed up and try to do new things and try to keep it interesting. So. There's one of those days, it's like, oh man, there's really nothing here. I really wanted a bowl of soup and a giant. You know what? So what we try to do is keep it interesting, keep it moving, keep it different, but you can always have a hamburger and french fries. Who doesn't like a good hamburger and french fries? This year, for the first time in nine years since I've been here, we're actually toasting the buns. It might sound simple, completely different way to eat a hamburger now on a toasted bun than a non-toasted bun. It's the little things that make the difference. So that's what I try to do. Okay. Well, wait a minute. I want to ask now. I want to ask a question. Okay. So we talked about the fried chicken. We talked about barbecue and things of that sort. Do you guys feel comfortable coming and talking to me? I do. What yeah. do you? Yeah. Why then? Why can't we get the rest of the students to come and talk to me? It's something to think about. Something to think of. What? Come on. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. It is a good question. And, a you good know, question. and you know what? The thing of it is, is there's some of them, there's some, there's some of, the, of the kids that don't want to interact or because I'm loud and I'm obnoxious and I'm silly. But you know what? The way I look at it is, is from a standpoint that this is, this is your area of retreat from academia to get away from the professors and get away from the administration and get away from Milliken and I can come down here and be silly with my friends and break bread and get full and have a soda or have whatever it is and I can just chillax. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to try to accomplish. That's the environment that I'm trying to invite you all to come to. But it's amazing to watch. I love watching you young people too because some of them, most of you are all like, I can't text fast enough. I gotta do it. But nobody wants to talk anymore. So I commend the both of you for breaking down that barrier to say, I'll go talk to him. I got a big growl, 